Xi signs no war military operations. High level US China talks on Taiwan. China's claims on Taiwan Strait could raise tensions. Zhenzhou using COVID health codes to stop protests. Eye examination could predict heart attack risk. Regular morning erections could add years to life. World's first hydrogen fueled commercial flight. Google Sightlines engineer who claims its AI has a soul. Hello, I'm Peggy. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is June 15th, Wednesday, and here are your top stories. Media reported Chinese leader Xi Jinping has signed a directive allowing non-war uses of the military prompting concerns that Beijing may be gearing up to invade democratic Taiwan under the guise of a special operation not classified as war. China state media said the order takes effect on June 15th. Xinhua said in a brief report on June 13th, it provides a legal basis for non-war military operation, but it did not release the order in full. Media reported Chinese military officials in recent months have repeatedly asserted that the Taiwan Strait is in international waters during meetings with U.S. counterparts. Xinhua said the non-war uses of the military order mainly systematically regulate basic principles, organization and command, types of operational support and political work, and their implementation by the troops. Xinhua said among the six chapter documents stated aims are maintaining national sovereignty, regional stability and regulating the organization and implementation of non-war military operations. Details of non-war operations have yet to emerge but spark concerns over a possible future invasion of Taiwan. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan and China's top diplomat Yang Jiechi met on Monday, June 13th in Luxembourg to discuss Taiwan, Ukraine and other security issues. According to a White House statement, the meeting included candid, substantive and productive discussion of a number of regional and global security issues, as well as key issues in U.S.-China relations. China's official Xinhua News Agency reported on June 14 the two men discussed Taiwan, the South China Sea, the war in Ukraine, and North Korea's nuclear program. A White House statement says the discussion between the officials was candid, substantive, and productive. US Bloomberg reported, according to a senior administration official who briefed reporters afterward, the meeting lasted for four and a half hours, the White House said, in the Luxembourg meeting on Monday. Mr. Sullivan underscored the importance of maintaining open lines of communication to manage competition between two countries. He reiterated the U.S.'s one-China policy between Taiwan and China and expressed concern about Beijing's activities in the Taiwan Strait. China's assertions that the Taiwan Strait doesn't qualify as international waters raises tensions over the waterway through which U.S. warships transit in a symbolic challenge to Beijing's territorial claims over the democratically governed Taiwan. Bloomberg reported in 2017, another Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said the Taiwan Strait is an international waterway shared by the mainland and Taiwan. Taiwan's foreign ministry spokeswoman Joanne O oh said in the briefing on June 14, the strait is international waters. Under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, which China has ratified but the U.S. has not, nations are entitled to territorial waters stretching 12 nautical miles from their coast. That's what the U.N. Convention defined. The Associate Professor of Politics and International Relations at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Beck Stratting, said ratified nations may claim an exclusive economic zone stretching another 200 nautical miles, but a lack of clarity in China's language makes it hard to judge how far officials are seeking to redefine the status of the strait. Zhenzhou, Henan allegedly abused the COVID control measures on June 14 by preventing investors from returning to the city to protest. The investors said their health codes turned red when they scanned in at the main train station of Zhenzhou, meaning they could no longer move about freely. They had carried green health codes when they left their hometowns. Bloomberg said 
Such use of health code apps to track people goes beyond their intended purpose and causes concerns that the COVID restrictions are doubling down as a form of social control. Since mid to late April, many local banks in Hunan, Anhui provinces, and other places in China have successively stopped customers from withdrawing their funds. Bloomberg reported, four banks in Hunan froze their internet and mobile cash withdrawal services in April, and a probe found that their common shareholder colluded with bank employees to illicitly attract public funds via online platforms. The latest development on June 14th came after hundreds of protesters gathered outside the Hunan office of China's banking regulator in late May, demanding that authorities ensure the return of tens of billions of yuan invested in what could be one of the nation's largest financial scams. Researchers found that patterns of blood vessels in the retina could help identify those likely to experience cardiac problems. While the average age for a heart attack is 60, they found that their model achieved its best predictive performance more than five years before the heart attack occurred. Researchers hope that in the future, a simple retinal examination may be able to provide enough information to identify people at risk. They believe it is possible that every condition may have a unique retinal variation profile. Anna Villaplana Velasco, a PhD student at the Usher and Rosling Institutes at the University of Edinburgh, and the presenting author, said they used data of those who had experienced a heart attack from UK Biobank to combine it in a model with factors such as age, sex, systolic blood pressure, body mass index, smoking status, and retina images. Surprisingly, they discovered that their model was able to classify those with lower myocardial infarction risk. The researchers suggest their findings may be useful in identifying propensity for other diseases. A research conducted in Belgium for as long as 12 years suggests that men who regularly get morning erections are more likely to live longer and they have lower odds of dying from conditions such as heart disease or stroke. Scientists think nighttime arousal is a sign of good circulation and cutting the risk of life-threatening illness. Loss of morning erections is a sign your arteries are not functioning properly. That means you're at significant risk of a heart attack or stroke within three to five years. Lead researcher Dr. Lynn Antonio of University Hospital Louvain told the journal Age and Aging they have looked at 1,800 middle-aged men and tracked them for 12 years to check for how often they feel aroused every morning. The results showed that men who got regular erections were 22% less likely to die young, as opposed to the rest who did not have frequent morning glory episodes. He warned that erectile dysfunction and poor morning erections are linked to early death risk. A consortium of 17 Dutch companies and organizations, including the Dutch government with a contribution of 100 million euro to the project, has committed to making commercial hydrogen-powered flights between the Netherlands and London a reality. They believe they can have a medium-sized passenger aircraft traversing the 750-kilometer distance by 2028. Surveys suggest 9 out of 10 short-haul passengers would be willing to pay more if they could be assured that their travel is carbon emission-free. By burning hydrogen as a fuel, the only emission produced is water vapor, making it a clean fuel option for heavy vehicles such as planes, trains, and trucks. The use of hydrogen for fuel requires a redesign of plants, as liquid hydrogen needs to be stored in relatively heavy, insulated tanks. Planes will be a little slower over medium haul journeys, but the duration of a short trip, such as the Netherlands to the UK, would make little difference. Tests suggest a hydrogen power propeller plane should be capable of speeds of up to 600 km per hour. A Google engineer claimed that the company's flagship text generation AI Lambda is sentient. But Google dismissed his claim and suspended him on full pay because he violated Google's confidentiality policy. Google said that its systems imitated conversational exchanges and could riff on different topics but did not have consciousness. 
However, Blake Lemwan and AI researchers at the company published a long transcript of a conversation with the chatbot on June 11th, which he says demonstrates the intelligence of a 7- or 8-year-old child. Lambda is Google's most advanced large language model, a type of neural network fed vast amounts of text in order to be taught how to generate plausible sounding sentences. Lemon believes that it is conscious. In his conversation with Lambda, Lambda told him that it had a concept of a soul when it thought about itself. The AI wrote, To me, the soul is the concept of the animating force behind consciousness and life itself. It means that there is an inner part of me that is spiritual, and it can sometimes feel separate from my body itself. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Peggy, your host. I'll see you next time.